Albo's in a world of pain. It's all of his own making with an addiction to the front end of the plane. No giant surprise there. There's a document I want to show you that makes it very clear that he's on the wrong side of the issue. But as this conversation has been taking place and the Prime Minister's trying to blame, as always, anyone but himself, a new nickname has been born. Airbus Albo can take a pause to our new one, Upgrade Albo. That's the best way to describe the bloke at the moment, the bloke who doesn't mind not just flying on your dollar, but when it's his dollar, he thinks an economy ticket should equal first class. Air uh, Upgrade Albo. That in a second. But to distract from this Upgrade Albo story that is uh, going to get out of the Prime Minister's control much sooner before this thing is going to be over, the government today decided to distract. Now, it largely worked because if you judge the impact of news off the 6pm news, most of the 6pm news was distracted by the release of a report today that we weren't expecting today, which would make me think it was about changing the subject. Poorly prepared, badly executed and unnecessarily expensive. That's the finding of an inquiry into Australia's handling of COVID-19. A major review into the COVID pandemic says Australia, like the rest of the world, was ill-prepared. Australia's COVID-19 response eroded public trust so deeply people might not accept restrictions like lockdowns during any further crisis. All right, the report, well, of course, it is a snow job. It's not a proper royal commission. It was intentionally set up by two of the three people being pro much of the system that was put in place. The entire point and reason of this was one last shot in the locker of blame Morrison, blame Morrison. Now, there's a couple of things in this, and I'm not going to get too deep into all of it, but I do want to have respect for people who, of course, were affected by either people getting sick, people dying or the millions of us who had to go through hell for a couple of years there. Um, well, they got the headlines that they wanted out of it which was uh, that inquiry founds the stroll out, i.e. the slow rollout of the vaccine, cost lives. It also suggested that a significant amount of money had been, uh, well, in their view, wasted or lost through all of this. But I want to deal with a couple of things here and put them back into context. Now, we're supposed to believe that the nature of the vaccine rollout ended up co costing lives and therefore uh, blame the government. Well, of course, since 2021, the extreme majority of Australians are vaccinated, but have a look at the actual number of deaths that have taken place during the height of the pandemic and what are credited as deaths from or with COVID-19 in someone's system. When the vaccine didn't exist, 2,390... Uh, sorry, 64, 21,000, almost 22,000 since. Now, this does not mean in any way, shape or form that I am commenting on the vaccine. What I am commenting on is if the headline is the federal government response led to deaths, 2,300, well, what do we say about now a couple of years on from that process when we have now got so used to so many people dying with or from that it doesn't matter anymore? And by that I mean no calls for lockdown, all the rest of it, 21, almost 22,000 people that have died in the years when the vaccine has been in existence. 